This is what I want you to learn from this, that I never give up hope. Hope is there is something that is very resiliency. Remember me going crazy, abandoning the values that I was given, and uh, live not in a good way. Respect your parents and your teachers. Work hard. And there's no good example in this country or in this world, the country that has been built on the dream. This is America. America is a perfect example of a country that has been built on, on a dream. So you need really to work hard. And one thing is certain, whether it is you are Martin Luther King, whether you are Gandhi, or whether you are Mandela, one thing is true. Even though you dream and sleep, the dream is going to come, it is not. But if you work hard for it, then your dream can, can come true. This country has so much that sometimes we are carried away by the luxuries and the good things that we have, and we take them for granted. And especially our, our, my generation and the younger generation of America are in big trouble. Because those lux luxuries and those good things, like computers and everything here, was created or were created by a dreamer. Like somebody like Dr. Martin Luther King, he had a dream, but he worked for our dream, for his dream to be realized. But what are we going to do this generation? Are we going to be a generation of, of, uh, of Abraham Lincoln or any other different generation? And I'm myself, I'm a teacher, and most of the teachers here can, uh, can attest with me. When I see what I'm seeing in my student grades is not good. So because they are not dreaming, because they don't work hard for their dream, and that is really not good, and because they take things for granted. So I hope uh, you are not uh, taking things for, for granted. The other thing is I learned the one, one joke. Thing. When I first came here, I didn't graduate from high school. I went to community college. I took my GED and went to community college. And the hardest subject I had ever taken is uh, Shakespeare. And uh, I was really struggling in Shakespeare class. So my professor asked me, uh, I went to my professor, and I was having a C plus by then in a the midterm, and I was not really comfortable with it. So I went and I asked, what could I do differently? in order to, to get good grade. And she said, Gabriel, uh, in the syllabus there was uh, a section called uh, like a special project. That if I was going to do my special, my, my, my special project exceptionally good, then she will grade me upon that. And then that would indi be indication that I have understood Shakespeare because it was really very challenging. So what I did, I took uh, Hamlet, uh, soliloquy. The um, soliloquy. So I went to her and he said, Gabriel, is it real? Are you going to do it? And I said, yeah, with, with your help, I can do it. <laughs> with your help, I can do it. So I spent twice, we, I met, I went to a office twice a week and I was practicing because I was using my high school education. Because you remember me being a, on the drama club, being in a debating club, those skills helped me. So I worked with her on my pronunciations, on gestures and all this, and by November, two at the end of the semester, I did uh, image on the stage and I was performing Emily to be or not to be. That is the question. <laughs> so at first, because um, I was not understanding the I was not understanding the class, because I was not I thought it was Shakespeare. I thought it was Hamlet. But as I was thinking deeply, and as I was dramatizing Hamlet, I discovered that Hamlet is me and Hamlet is you. Because Hamlet had a problem. His father was killed, and when he came, his uncle was doing crazy things with his mom. And that is what matters in life. You need to stop and ask yourself, what kind of action do you want to take? And that is what Hamlet did. So uh, I took Shakespeare like, like my father, because my father used to say a mountain. But I have after I discovered mountain is any problem that is uh, affecting you. So Hamlet now became me, and Hamlet is you, because Shakespeare was written in 15th century ago, but because he, he has seen the problem that are affecting human life. And what matter is, when you have a problem, you need to stop and ask yourself, what course of action do you want to take? That is one thing that I took away from Shakespeare, and I think you can take this uh, from now. I think we should switch to that. I would return in 2007, uh, and I was so fortunate, and and honored to be going, uh, to be followed by Jane Marlow, who is filming here, and, uh, and Devin Moore. I didn't want just to go and see my family. I know one thing is, 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 is evident. When there is a war, there is always destruction. There is always suffering. 
and one of our goal was for somebody to follow me, bring back the suffering, and so that people like you can see. And, and that is the work that uh, the film is in their progress. Yeah, they thought I was dead for all these 20 years. The Gabriel will never come. So how could the lost child go back and look for their family? I think you will see it in, in the film here. So uh, Jen followed me. We flew here, Jen and I, David, and two others lost boys. We went to Kenya, and then we flew into the village. And I think this, the, the, the picture is what the film will tell it. So we'll stop here, and then we, we switch to the, the film.